Hello, and welcome to the, to the Nintendo Power Retrospectives. I'm Count Zero. We've come to issue 17 of Nintendo Power for October of 1990, and the magazine's third strategy guide issue for Final Fantasy. The magazine has been building up to this game for basically all of 1990 to date, so it's time to give this game a look. As I'm only covering one game this issue, issue with, and this episode, it's going to be shorter than usual. So, let's get started. The cover of this issue is, frankly, bad. We have what appear to be the four Heroes of Light being in what's supposed to be the airship, but it all just looks too small. I understand that Nintendo has, at this time, been downplaying the Japanese art for a lot of titles in an attempt to appeal to U.S. users and to kind of avoid any sort of stigmatization related to, oh, we're putting out a Japanese game. Partly because this is, we're still kind of around the time where Japan was stealing our jarbs and all that other nonsense. Still, when you've got art by Yoshitaka Amano, why go with anything else? It's too, it, it, it's such a unique style that it doesn't look uniquely Japanese. And so if you use that art, it doesn't feel like, oh, this is Japanese. It's, oh, this is a very unique art style. And it draws my attention and pulls me into the work. And honestly, it would give the game a look and feel that would distinguish it from pretty much every other console and computer RPG on the market in 1990. Or well, for that matter, almost all of the 80s. We get maps of every section of the game. And as a nice touch, the stats for all the weapons, armor, and spells are listed in the section of the town that you buy them in, rather than having to flip back to, back and forth from a which, technical writing standpoint, this is interesting. Normally what you would do is you'd have your section of the book that is, this is the equipment section, this is the magic section, and you'd reference back with that for the relevant town sections. Um, for equipment, I see this working really well. Uh, for spells, it's a little more hit and miss. Um, just because for spells, yeah, it, it's... You're, you're not upgrading your spells as you go. I mean, you're buying new spells to upgrade your spell selection, but you're not replacing your spells with um, weapon uh, with, with you know, your first level spell slots with other first level spells as you go through the game. Uh, more or less, there are exceptions to this, but still. Um, monster information is listed the same way as the weapon information, in the sense that all the monsters in the region are listed in their relevant region. Monsters are also listed with their stats, along with what kind of creature they are, what their special attacks are, and what magic they're weak to and what they're immune to. If a monster had its stats listed in an earlier area, we get a reference back to their to that earlier area. Again, this works really well because as you go through the game and you level up, the monster types will escalate based on what level you're supposed to be at at what area of the game. So this works, again, really, really well. And works in the same way in the same sense that the weapon thing works well for towns. Each chapter of the game also has a piece of art depicting the action from that chapter in it. While this also doesn't use the Yoshitaka Amano art, I feel it works better because the art reminds me a lot of the cover art for Dungeons & Dragons adventures like Against the Giants and Keep on the Borderlands, where they depict the action from a particular section of the adventure on the course of the cover. So, pretty good. I like it. So, that's the guide. How does the game stack up? Final Fantasy builds heavily off the um, CRPG and video game RPG framework built um, by Dragon Quest in Japan and Ultima 3 Exodus in the US. The game has the strong visuals that Dragon Quest had, helped by the fact that, like Enix, Square recruited a big-name artist to do the character and monster designs, and while Yoshitaka Amano's art was never really used in the promotion of the game in the U.S., his artistic touch is still felt in the game, even with the hardware limitations of the NES. Like Ultima 3, the game lets you build your own party of adventurers, giving you a degree of customization and control over how you play the game that Dragon Quest 1 and 2 didn't have, by allowing the player to customize their party to reflect their own preferred play style. What Final Fantasy brings to the table that Dragon Quest didn't have is a really good sense of story. Yeah, the story is fairly linear and rigid, 
but also has a percent of progression and escalation to it. Dragon Quest starts out with a Save the Princess story, and after that's completed, it turns into a Kill the Overlord in his lair story, which is in itself a variant of the old Kill the Wizard Down the Hole story of the original Wizardry game. On the other hand, what Final Fantasy does is it gets rid of the Save the Princess story very, very early, before setting up the idea that there's something wrong within the world, and you have to explore to find out what it is. Your characters are told they're the prophecies for Heroes of Light, and that they need to brighten the darkened elemental crystals they have with them. However, you're not told how to do that, and where you need to go to do it. By exploring the world and talking to NPCs, that you, in turn, find out what tasks you need to do to really accomplish this goal. The only real minus of this is in terms of the game's story, there's no real way to really sequence break, and no reward for exploration aside from finding the next plot point. But considering that this is a game for the NES, that's not too surprising, as I doubt that the NES can support the level of non-linearity that something like the Elder Scrolls series grants the player. Gameplay-wise, the game does have some problems. The Thief class is relatively useless until you upgrade it to the Ninja, and the Red Mage class suffers problems with being a jack-of-all-trades, but a master of none. Additionally, there's problems with combat. Visually, combat is somewhat iffy, as the background consists of a alt of a sidewall, which varies based on your environment, and then a just plain black floor. Further, when an enemy is defeated, any other attacks that were targeted on that enemy are wasted, as they're just expended on open air. This would be less of a problem with melee attacks, as you're not wasting resources with those, but because the Final Fantasy uses a spell slot system similar to basic D&D, and for that matter advanced D&D, where you have a certain number of spell castings available to you at certain spell levels, you and since you can't repurpose a second level spell slot to cast a first level spell, if you're out, you're out, which means if you cast a fire spell on an enemy that you're expecting your fighter to soften up a little bit, and the fighter instead kills it outright with a crit, you've just wasted a spell slot that you might not necessarily be able to easily get back. This leads me to the big thing that the original Final Fantasy as the NES on the NES has going against it. This game has been remade loads of times. I own at least two different remakes of this game. One for the original PlayStation and one for the Game Boy Advance. Each version better graphics than the NES version, higher resolution sprites, higher quality music, and which allows Amanus Art, which was okay looking on the NES, to really shine in a way that didn't before. Honestly, these versions, the remakes, all have things going for them that the original version doesn't have. Gameplay refinements that make them better. Whether it's the fact that when you attack enemies, you don't... Um, if you have two characters getting hit on one enemy and the enemy is defeated, you don't waste your attack. It is retargeted to another enemy. Um, you have refinements like, for example, you can save without having to rest them in first, meaning that, that saving your game doesn't cost money. You some of, the, some of these versions even have options like switch to a spell point system as opposed to the spell slot system that the original NES version had. Now, this doesn't say that Final Fantasy isn't a bad game. It's excellent. It's just that you're really better served by buying one of the remakes than buying the original unless you are a collector. If you are an NES collector, go ahead, get the original. But otherwise, there's the remake for the PSP. There's the remake for PlayStation. You can get it in the PlayStation Store. You can get the GBA version. You can get it on iOS or Android. You can get it just about any way you want on almost any single platform that you, any platform that you want. And honestly, with the fact that we're getting um, Game Boy Advance emulation on the Virtual Console on the Wii U now, means it's entirely likely we might even get a release of Final Fantasy: Dawn of Souls for uh, for Virtual Console on the Wii U. So, really, the game is so accessible on so many other platforms that, on the one hand, there's no reason for me not to get it, but also means there's no reason, real reason, aside, again, from collecting, to get the original. So, next time, we're going to be looking at another normal issue of Nintendo Power, so that'll be a longer episode. 
If you enjoyed the show, please pledge on Patreon. Your financial support will help me upgrade some of my equipment and in turn improve the show and help me get episodes out more regularly. Thank you very much for your support and for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>